button to click on to continue. If you brush one of the buttons, the button will present itself. When you click continue, a picture will appear on the screen. When you click the left hand arrow, you'll go back to pictures you saw before. Rawr! Click the right hand button and go on to the next pictures. Wise Man Button. This is our friend Wise Man's Button. Click his button and you can hear his stories. I am the button to start the game. Yes, of course, I play games. If you also like to play games, click my button and start. Button. I'll let you into a secret. Ah, this button is simply full of surprises. Want to find out? Just click the button. Ah. Finished playing? Want to leave this game? Exit here. Have you finished playing? Ah. Do you want to go now? Okay, see you again soon. You can leave from here. How are you doing? I'm the enter button. When you've chosen the screen you want, mark the door and enter. the button to click on to continue. Want to go on to the next picture? Click the button. Continue. I am the button to start the game. Yes, of course. Clicking the button will lead you into the game. <laughs> Click on me for a bit of fun and a few surprises. If you want to have fun and some great surprises, click the gig button. <laughs> to go to Wise Man's screen, click on me. Click the Wise Man button to hear some Wise Man stories. <laughs> me. Click the help button if you're not sure what to do. It will help you. On the main screen, choose a screen from any of the pictures. On the main screen button, you can choose a screen you like from any of the pictures. Finished playing? Want to leave this? on the picture and watch. Click 
one of the small pictures and listen to the story. You can always skip a section if you click the wise man button. How do we know how far away from us the sun is? The nearer we try to get to it, the sun nevertheless stays very far from us. What haven't we tried? Climbing mountains, going up in a hot air balloon, flying in an aeroplane. We even tried taking off in a spaceship. Nothing helped. The sun always stayed very far from us. So how can we find out how far away from us the sun is? Today, when Tom wanted to pick a nice juicy apple from the top of the tree, he knew it would only take him a second or two. Even though it was a tall tree, Tom knew he was strong and nimble. He may meet a lot of friends on the way. When he stops to chat with Cherry, the baby bird, or with Rodney Rooster, the trip will take much longer, perhaps even a whole hour longer. That's about as long as it takes you to eat your breakfast. How long would it take Tom to reach the sun? Oh, that would take a very long time indeed. Much longer than the time you take to have your lunch. To reach the sun, Tom would need more time even than you'd need to get to the sea or to sleep through one night. Yes, it's a long, long way to the sun. With a little help from our scientist friends, we worked out that to get to the sun, Tom would need even more time than you have lived. That must be very hard for you to imagine, but it's true. And even though the sun is very far away from us, we are terribly fond of it. It keeps us warm with its light, and we want to know more about it. Why do the leaves fall off the trees? Why don't they just stay on the tree all the time? Is it because they stay joined to our bodies like our arms? These are interesting questions. You see, leaves help the tree. Last time we met in Let It Be Morning, we talked about how important the leaves are to the tree because they supply its food. Now what would the tree do if it had no one to give it food? Could we live without food? To answer these questions, we had best take a look at the trees around us. Do all the trees shed their leaves? Are there any trees which are left with no leaves at all? When is it that most leaves fall? If we can answer these questions, it will be much easier to understand why they fall off in the first place. Trees shed their leaves at different rates. Some trees shed them slowly and grow new leaves in their place. That's why these trees always look green, and we call them evergreen. Other trees lose their leaves quickly, usually in autumn before the winter begins. We call such trees deciduous because they lose all their leaves before the winter and then grow them again when the spring comes the following year. Why do they lose all their leaves like that? Well, we'll talk about that another time. But remember, deciduous trees stay bare with no leaves on them for four months of the year. The period when we can see only their trunks and branches is called fall. The animals in the forest are very frightened when fire breaks out there. Tom and his friends find the heat of the flames, the thick smoke, and the loud crackling noise quite terrifying. Fire can kill you if you aren't careful. After the last fire in the forest, everything turned black. Now only charred and blackened stumps remain of the trees that were once green and full of life. What happened to the green forest? The fire was red. The forest had been green, but after the fire went out, everything was black. Why does fire change the shape of the forest? Why is fire so hot when it burns? How can you put it out? Once, Tom escaped from a fire when a tree was struck by lightning. The tree burned like a huge red and yellow torch. All the birds were so terrified that they fled their nests. There was a wind blowing and that made the fire even stronger. Eventually, it began to rain. The rainwater made the flames smaller, cooling the great heat caused by the fire. 
the fire that had spread so much before the rain came began to get smaller. That was how Tom began to understand that a fire can be put out by rain. The cool water stops the fire burning. The rain did not stop, and so the fire got smaller and smaller. After a while, the fire went out altogether. That great big fire which had threatened to burn down the whole forest was no longer hot, noisy and smoky. One burned out stump in the middle of the forest was all that remained to remind us that once a beautiful green tree had stood in its place. Hello, I'm looking for some honey ice cream. Do you know where they sell it? Honey ice cream? Hmm, let me see, and maybe I'll remember. Monster, how did you get here? Go away at once. Can you help me, children? Find out how we can get rid of this monster. Well, tell us where the honey ice cream is. Where could it be? I just don't know. I'll wash the monster off the wall with water. Even the water hasn't washed the monster away. I'm going to color the monster. The color hasn't got rid of the monster. The cupboard is locked. Help me get the key. Oh, I know. The dog will frighten the monster away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, dear. That monster isn't even afraid of dogs. I think I'll use these stones to get rid of the monster. The monster just won't go away. Click the mouse when you see a hand on the screen. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's see how you fare if I throw at you a chair. Well, the monster obviously isn't afraid of chairs. The key is too high up. Help me by marking something that will get me to it. Now you can get to the key. What can you do with the key? Let's 
see what we have here. What can I do with this ladder? Oh, I know. The dog will frighten the monster away. <laughs> oh, dear. That monster isn't even afraid of dogs. Hmm. Let's see what we have here. Righty-ho, monster. Let's see you fold up and disappear in the light of the torch. There. At last I've gotten rid of you. Whoa. 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 You stubborn monster. Oh, not even my torch can put you out. <laughs> what can I do with this ladder? Are you still trying to remember where the honey ice cream is? I keep trying, but I just can't remember where that honey ice cream is. Click the mouse when you see a hand on the screen. Aha! Monsters die sensibly. Victory at last! Did you notice how frightened I was of your shadow? Listen, I didn't mean to scare you. I only wanted to find some honey ice cream. Now that the War of the Monsters is over, I'll be happy to take you to the ice cream shop. I'm a big ice cream fan myself. <laughs> Come on then, let's go. Bye, Snail, and thanks for your help. Now, children, you can go on learning by clicking one of the buttons. the mouse when you see a hand on the screen.
Shadow, and I'll give you mine. How can we swap? I can't find my shadow. <laughs> Maybe you left it under your wing. and shadow of yours. Let's go. <laughs> Click one of the small pictures and listen to the story. You can always skip a section if you click the wise man button. Bear loves eating honey and sugar. Sometimes he has tea with lots of sugar in it. The moment that Bear likes best is when he gets to the bottom of the cup and there is a whole layer of sugar to scoop out with a spoon. When Bear has finished licking off all the sugar, he sighs with satisfaction. But wait a minute, he says to himself. I put four spoons of sugar in my tea and just now I licked only one spoonful off the bottom. Where has all the sugar gone? That's right. The sugar has melted in the hot tea. But where does that sugar go after you've stirred your tea? Bear can't see any difference in the color of the water, and there is still the same amount of tea in the cup after he added the sugar. Of course, he can tell the difference in the taste of the tea, because it is sweet, and that means the sugar is there, somewhere. But that hasn't changed the way it looks. My scientist friends have looked into this question. It seems that the sugar breaks down into tiny particles that are too small for us to see. The water has this effect on the sugar. The sugar particles are so very tiny that they are impossible to see. They become invisible, but we can still taste the sweetness of the sugar with our taste buds. How do birds fly? 
Dickie Bird knows how to fly, as all birds do. She learnt it when she was very young. Shortly after her feathers had grown, she made her first little flutter around the trees near the nest. At first, she found it quite hard, just like a baby does when it takes its first steps. It was only when Baby Bird broke out of his shell with no feathers on him at all that Dickie suddenly remembered how very hard it was to be little. Dickie had to teach Baby Bird everything he knew about flying. Actually, birds fly in the air rather like fish swim in the water. Look in any fish tank and watch how the fish flap their fins in order to move in the water. The water moves backwards while the fish moves forward. Well, you see, air is just like the water in a fish tank. When Dickie flies, she simply flaps the air with her wings. The air is pushed back and down, whilst Dickie flies up and forwards. Why does Bear need fur? After all, in the summer, his fur makes him very hot and he gets all sweaty in it. You can take off your clothes when it is hot, but, but Bear can't. He has to keep his fur on all the time. He can't just hang it up in the closet on a hanger and leave it there till winter comes again. It's very hard for Bear in the summer because his fur is so hot. But it would be even harder in winter if Bear had no fur to keep him warm. In fact, Bears would die if they had no fur to keep them warm during the cold, frozen winters of the north. Bear has to keep up his body temperature so that he can play, climb trees, eat honey and drink from the river. His fur helps keep him warm. The fur acts like a blanket. Before you get into bed, the blankets and the sheets are cold, aren't they? After a while, though, the blankets warm the sheets up, don't they? Now, who makes them warm? That's right, you do. The blankets make sure that all the warmth that's in your body stays in the bed. Well, that is more or less how bear's fur keeps him warm. We are about to set sail. Very soon the flood will be here and it will be too dangerous to stay on the land. Some of the animals are already in the ark. But where are their mates? I'm going to call the other animals into the ark. Look in the windows. Which mate fits the shadow that will appear on the shore? Hey, cat. Mm, come here. Come aboard the ark. Oh, thank goodness I found a mate. that will appear in winter belongs. No, that isn't my mate. Does that look like my mate? Isn't it a wonderful world? I found a mate. Come aboard the ark. <laughs> Oh, how quick you are. You managed to identify the mates in no time at all. Off we go then. Let's go into the ark. I can see you. I can too. Come and join me and all will be fine. That's how we'll manage to continue our bear species. <laughs> Oh, how quick you are. You managed to identify the mates in no time at all. Off we go then. 
Let's go into the ark. I found a friend a bit like a porcupine. I think we'll get on fine. <laughs> Oh, how quick you are. You managed to identify the mates in no time at all. Off we go then. Let's go into the ark. I found my mate. It's not too late. I can see now how. Noah's Ark is going to turn into a real love boat. Wow! Come and join us! <laughs> oh, how quick you are. You managed to identify the mates in no time at all. Off we go then. Let's go into the Ark. <laughs> Click the mouse when you see a hand on the screen.
Hang on a minute. Are you sure you want to leave this picture? Hang on a minute. Are you sure you want to leave this picture? <laughs>